If you were to ask a million people about the origin of the iconic title Black Panthers, most people would refer to the Marvel movie that was released in 2018. However, it is intriguing to discover that the term has more military roots than anyone would have ever imagined. The Black Panthers were very influential and groundbreaking in their time, but most people have no idea who they really are and what their contribution to the black community was. Who were the Black Panthers? What were their accomplishments in society? Join us as we take a dive into the history of the real heroic Black Panthers. Who were the original Black Panthers? Long before the superhero Black Panthers appeared in movies, there were the original Black Panthers that existed during World War II. The 761st Tank Battalion, which was also known as the Black Panthers, fought in Europe in the year of 1944. During the Second World War, this group arrived in Normandy, France in October and quickly entered combat. These heroic soldiers spent about 183 days fighting for the Allies and liberated 30 towns en route to Germany. Despite the Black Panthers' heroic actions in war, they faced several challenges back home in the southern United States. This group had to confront prejudice and discrimination in their communities. It was not easy for them, even though they were soldiers. The white people were reluctant to see them as equals. However, they continued their work on social justice and educating their communities about racism. Why were the Black Panthers involved in war? As the world was getting ready for the Second World War and the United States was busy getting its military prepared, there was a conversation among the military leaders concerning whether the African Americans should be part of the armored units. The U.S. had allowed African Americans to fight in previous wars, such as the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, but segregation was widespread and a way of life for America during the early half of the 20th century. Unfortunately, Many people believed that black people were not fit to be part of the armored units or to be a combat soldier. Even Colonel James, who led the 357th Infantry Regiment, stated that in his own perspective, black soldiers were second-class citizens and they didn't have the proper training to be part of the war. The United States Secretary of War, Henry Stimson, accepted that black men would serve in the military. Nonetheless, he did have serious doubts about their abilities, especially in roles with using deadly force and leadership. Despite these beliefs of men in power, African American men were allowed in the war due to the massive amounts of casualties the war had caused. The 761st was formed in early 1942 in Louisiana. The battalion was eventually moved to Camp Hood, Texas, where they would train for over two years. For comparison, they went through two years of preparation while they were highly aware that the white units who were sent overseas had far less training. The racial tension was high and there were many instances of racism. While they would have retaliated in response, they were persuaded to stand down by their lieutenant colonel. They were being watched by not just the U.S. Army, but by the entire world. They chose to take the high road and allow their work to prove their worth. The men were trained in M4 Sherman medium tanks and the M5 Stuart light tank. Although their extended training was more so the result of the army commanders not willing to give them the chance to prove their worth in combat, the extra training would prove invaluable when they finally engaged Germany in combat. When they finally set foot on the battlefields of Europe, the 761st set out to prove they were just as good, if not better, than their white comrades. Spoiler alert, they did. By the end of April 1945, the 761st was among the first United States battalions that faced off with the Soviet forces, and on April 26, 1945, they joined the Red Army in Steyr, Austria. Let's take a deeper look at the weapons that were used in the war. The Black Panthers made use of two weapons in the Second World War. They were the M4 Sherman and the N5 Stuart light tank. To meet the wartime demand for tank engines that were used in the M3, they created a new version using the twin Cadillac V8 automobile engines and twin hydromatic transmission that has a transfer case. The tank was initially called the M4, but to avoid confusion and mix-up with the M4 Sherman, it was later renamed the M5. The M4 Sherman 
which is also referred to as the medium tank, was the main tank that was used by the US and the Allies in the war. The tank was considered to be reliable, cost-effective, and was produced in large quantities. It was developed from the M3 medium tank, which had its main gun in a side mouth for quick usage. The M4 kept the design of the M3, but moved the main 75mm gun to a central turret that could rotate 360 degrees. Although a gyro stabilizer was used to sim the Hun when the tank stopped, it is not as precise as needed to fire when the tank is moving. The developer of this tank focused more on reliability, ease of production, maintenance, and maintaining a moderate size and weight. All these factors, as well as the Sherman's superior armor and design, were better and more reliable than the German tanks in the early years of World War II. The M4 Sherman even holds the records for the most produced tank in the history of the United States, with about 49,324 units produced, including all its variants. The M5 Stuart was the Army's standard light tank at the beginning of World War II. It was primarily used in reconnaissance, flank security, and infantry support roles. The M5 was lightly armored, quick and easy to maneuver, with a top speed of 36 miles per hour. Originally designed as a light battle tank, its role was limited because of its 37mm main gun and thin armor, which could not stand up to German tanks in direct combat. The tank did prove useful in an infantry support role where it knocked out machine gun nests and other enemy strongpoints supporting soldiers as they advanced through Axis territories. This type of tank was used by the 70th Tank Battalion in support of the 1st Infantry Division during Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily in 1943. The M5 Stuart tanks were also used by the 745th Tank Battalion, Company D, who supported the 1st Infantry Division from D-Day until the end of the war. Now, let's discuss the Black Panther's achievements. In 1976, the 761st Tank Battalion received the Presidential Unit Citation. In 2005, a monument dedicated to the 761st Tank Battalion was unveiled at Fort Hood in Texas. It serves as a permanent tribute to the black soldiers who fought and served for liberty, honor, and democracy. The military firmly embraced these beliefs leading up to World War II. Even though African Americans have fought with courage in every major war since the Revolutionary War, it completely overlooked the fact that during World War I, four black regiments had served with the French, and their efforts were recognized by the French government. Three of the four regiments were awarded the coveted curator by the French military. Only the United States Chief of Ground Forces, Lieutenant General Leslie McNair, was the voice of reason for African Americans serving in military units. He believed that the nation could not afford to exclude any potential asset and that the color of their skin did not determine their skills or abilities in such circumstances. Although men in the military didn't see a need for African Americans in military units, McNair was determined that black men would fight. So, with McNair's unwavering support, the black press, the NAACP, and the Congress for Racial Equality all placed increasing pressure on the War Department and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his administration to allow black soldiers to serve in combat. In the summer of 1940, the U.S. Congress passed the Selective Training and Service Act. The act stated that in the selection and training of men in this act, there shall be no discrimination on any persons based on color or race a giant step in the fight against racism and discrimination. However, in October, the White House issued a statement stating that the service of black soldiers would be utilized on a fair, equitable basis, and the policy of segregation in the armed forces would continue to mirror social norms back during World War I. The first light tank battalion was organized in France under Lieutenant Colonel George S. Patton, Jr. In his command, these battles gave the idea of how better tanks could accomplish greater things on the battlefield in the future. He saw the tank corps as an independent combat arm. However, the Army's high command and members of the United States Congress didn't share Patton's views. 
the International Defense Act of 1920 would abolish the tank corps as an independent arm. Tank units then became under the control of the infantry. It wouldn't be for another 20 years that the armed force was created. Amid this training frenzy, the first group of black tankers arrived at Fort Knox in Kentucky in March of 1941 for armored warfare training with the 758th Tank Battalion. The first of three battalions to serve with the 5th Tank Group, the only predominantly black tank outfit established in the military during World War II. The 5th Tank Group was commanded by Colonel Leroy Nichols and was made up of black enlisted personnel with white commanding officers. But these officers would gradually be replaced with black officers as they completed their training. These pioneering black tankers trained in light tank operations, mechanics, and in related phases of mechanic warfare on the M5 light tank. Once the 758th Tank Battalion was in place, two more tank battalions were needed to complete the 5th Tank Group. So, on March 15, 1942, the War Department activated the 761st Tank Battalion in Camp Claiborne, located in Louisiana. Then, on September 15, 1943, the 761st Tank Battalion was moved to Camp Hood in Texas for advanced training, and there, they changed from light to medium tanks. It would be on April 1, 1943, that the final battalion, the 784th, would be activated. There was a need for personnel replacements in low on functioning tanks. All of these things at this point in the war were hard to come by. So as a result, the 761st was not committed to fight in the first days of the Battle of the Bulge. However, in January of 1945, they were sent into action again. And from December 31st, 1944 to February 2nd, 1945, the 761st took part in the American counteroffensive following the Battle of the Bulge. During a major battle entitled Belgium, the 761st fought for two continuous days against German Panzer and infantry units before the Germans withdrew in the face of a heavy Black Panther attack. Later, the 103rd Infantry Division and the 761st took part in assaults that resulted in the breach of a Siegfried Line. The Siegfried Line was the German defense system that stretched almost 400 miles on the western part of Germany. From March 20th to March 23rd of 1945, they operated far in advance of friendly artillery and faced vicious German resistance. Elements of the 761st destroyed several defensive positions along the Siegfried Line, captured seven German towns, and during that three-day period, the battalion inflicted 4,000 casualties on the German army and fought elements of 14 different German divisions. The unit inflicted 130,000 casualties on the German army and captured, destroyed, or aided in the liberation of more than 30 towns, several concentration camps, four airfields, and three supply dumps. All of this was accomplished despite the loss of 71st tanks and an overall casualty rate approaching 50%. The 761st was highly decorated, earning throughout the six months of their combat operations seven silver stars for valor, 246 purple hearts, and one Congressional Medal of Honor. What a feat! Apart from opposing police brutality, the Black Panther Party started more than 35 survival programs to support the community. They offered help like education, tuberculosis testing, legal aid, transportation, ambulance service, and making and giving free shoes to poor people. One notable program was the Free Breakfast for Children, which expanded to every major American city where the Black Panther Party was present. The government had started a similar test program in 1966, but, possibly in response to the Panthers, they not only extended it, but also made it a permanent initiative in 1975 likely upsetting Hoover. The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense started in October of 1966 in Oakland, California, and it was founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, who met at the Merritt College. Their primary reason for founding this group was to bring changes to black nationalism, socialism, and self-defense, especially against the widespread police brutality. This important step 
was part of the black power movement, and it was way different from the integration and nonviolent approaches of groups like the Southern Christian Leadership Conference that was led by Martin Luther King Jr. The Black Panther's name was inspired by the Black Panther symbol that was used by the Lowndes County Freedom Organization, which was an independent black political party in Alabama. Although we still have further to go as a country and as a world in terms of racism, we have come a long way. This wraps up the early origin and activities of the Black Panthers. How do you think the movement has impacted the present day black community? Let us know in the comments, and if you learned anything new from our video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos.